Well, welcome everyone to the Unfiltered Podcast. My name is Lee Stevenson, church planter and executive director of church planting with Converge. My name is Danny Parmalee, and I oversee church planting for Converge Mid-America. And the Unfiltered Podcast, where we just have real conversations about church planting and the church world, and uh, we try to keep it as unfiltered as we possibly can. So we are in a series right now that uh, where we're just talking about church in the COVID era in this current season that uh, we are in. And today's episode, we're going to just kind of try to peer into the future a little bit, Danny. So I need you to put those glasses on and help us out. Um, and we're just going to talk about what is the post-COVID church and church plant kind of look like. And uh, again, we're, uh, we're reaching out there based on kind of our own personal experiences and conversations we're having with guys from around the country. And uh, we have no idea if this is actually going to happen, but this is our best guess as what we think some of the, uh, the learnings are teaching us about what the church will look like. So do um, you want to get us started, man? <laughs> yeah, um, I think I heard some, uh, some beeping, the, the backup truck uh, in, in the background, which actually is perfect because that is kind of the new normal. People are going to be doing stuff virtually. People are going to be doing stuff from home. So I think that you're going to even see... Uh, less church meetings at the church and more people meeting from home, uh, which is yeah, great. But yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, I have the trash truck going by my house right now as I'm recording. So that's awesome. I, I apologize. <laughs> no, that is great because that is exactly it. So, I, you know, one of the things is that um, even if they come out with a vaccine tomorrow, uh, I, I think that we have a good, at minimum, year to two years for people's psyche even to just kind of calm down and, you know, enter into um, a back to normal, if if ever, because who knows, there could be new viruses, this thing could rear its head again, whatever, that type of thing. So I I think just even looking in the next couple of years, that uh, as you as you mentioned in the last episode, that there's probably going to be even some functional changes uh, uh, to church as far as, you know, passing the basket and communion. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if um, you know, even we've done everything we can to maximize space on Sunday and you get the 18 inch chairs and, and pack people in that literally you will have less people if you try to do that, because people will subconsciously or consciously say, nope, it's too cramped. It's too crowded. Yeah, um, it I just want a little space. Yep. I, I'm out of space that you will actually have more people by getting the bigger chairs and adding even six inches, even if there really is no difference between you know, someone breathing on you at six inches and, you know, six feet uh, type of thing that uh, there's just going to be kind of that that general feel. So I do think that things are going to be much more spread out. So what does that mean, um, Danny? I I agree wholeheartedly with the idea, like even in our our auditoriums are probably going to become more spaced out practically speaking for the pastor and for church volunteers, does that require them to remove seats? Does that require them to add services? Um, what do you, what do you sense when it comes to just like a typical service schedule on the weekend? Yeah. Um, I think that there may be, um, you know, that you, you can add a service or two, but there's no way you're going to take a 600 person church and, you know, all of a sudden have, six or eight services of 75 to 50. I mean, it's just, it it would be, it would be too taxing. I do think that you are going to see um, more online in a legitimate way that even if someone doesn't do online as their only method, but if it's now legitimate that it's like, okay, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to physical church this week, but the other two to three weeks, I'm, I'm not. Um, and 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 could even happen intentionally. So again, the church plant that I'm uh, at um, in uh, in the Nashville area, they're thinking of even as their slow relaunch process to saying, "All right, we're going to have 50 people for the live service, but you actually have to sign up ahead of time uh, to do that, um, and that will create a great dynamic because uh, they're they're actually going to switch from pre-recorded service to live services." Um, and if they do that, the thought is, is kind of in this transition time, it's like, okay, well now there are 50 people. So you even have a better experience, kind of the studio audience, if you will. Uh, but it's just as legitimate for those then that are viewing at home. And so even if you did that with two to three services, people can have that opportunity to be able to 
uh, go live from time to time, but that they're going to uh, focus and have more of that community interaction happening in smaller groups at homes. It'll happen during the week. So small groups or smaller watch party things. So yes, there's people that go to the physical service, but then, you know, there's groups of people um, meeting in their home and, 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 and meeting with other families, or maybe there's smaller venues that open up uh, with that. Yeah. I, 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 uh, we've talked about as well. Um, do we maybe do one or two services live, but um, we open up like this weekend is for people's that their last name is from A to mm -hmm. L, you know, type of thing and almost run it alphabetically and, and try to maximize the local neighborhood in home church feel until we feel like we can really open up to large numbers um, as a, a key strategy. And, and I think if we play this well, this has the ability for the local church to really raise up a whole new um, group of leaders Huge. Uh, that um, are needed when it comes to ultimately impacting our community. And so look at it from that standpoint, really focus in on what are we going to need to develop quality leaders and give them the resources and how do we equip them to be able to actually carry out neighborhood ministry at the level we need to. So it's not so dependent on just hired staff. Yeah. And um, like, like uh, has been mentioned before, uh, there is a um, a huge opportunity here because it actually does set up the church to scale uh, at a very large level and even to go into other uh, communities at a uh, low cost, if you will. I mean, uh, think of that if you're all of a sudden have a group of people that are gathering. It's like, well, you guys can pull together for a small group and you're you're just as engaged with the church, even though you may be 100 miles away or 200 miles away uh, type of thing. So I see there's huge opportunity there. One of the things that I've been um, talking about a little bit is there was a there was an article that that Gospel Coalition uh, published, Love Gospel Coalition, but it was something about this, you know, COVID may do away with a consumeristic church. And I didn't, okay, I didn't read the article, but I disagree. I didn't even want to read it because I actually think <laughs> The consumeristic people are not going away. They're just going to consume church differently. More, so yeah. there's a little yeah. bit of a fear in me that um, uh, that it will be a little bit easier to be disconnected. Because if you do go online, um, I mean, you literally can be like, ah, I don't think I want to go to this church. I, I mean, I've I've done this because part of my role, I wanted to see how you know, people were doing church. I mean, I, I visited five to six churches in one weekend and yeah, it's like, oh yeah. yeah, great worship. Oh, good preaching here. Oh, maybe I'll just log on to uh, the worship over here. I'll listen to this preacher this week and next week I'll do this. So I, I say that even admitting myself during this time have fallen into consumerism. So I do think we're going to have to think collectively as pastors and to figure out how to truly do church, truly do evangelism, truly do discipleship and not just worry about, again, now the numbers have just changed on how many people are, you know, in the seats, but we're looking at how many views we got. And it's like, okay, well, you have some people that are watching from some other country. Great. But are they really watching or, you know, what's going on with that? Oh, totally. And the challenge at the same time is how do we, how do we continue to create community? How do we do discipleship when everybody is battling screen fatigue? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I know for us, like we, we had Bible 101 offer. We were trying to create online social groups. Um, you, you know, we're, we, we're running the gamut of different opportunities to engage people. We're also just, you know, just a social, like, Hey, one, yeah. you know, whoever wants to join us for a hour social on zoom, join us. And we just noticed the participation that we expected is, is not nearly what we thought would be created in this. And I think a lot of it is just due to people have fatigue of looking at their screen and they're just tired of that. Yeah. There was the initial kind of excitement like, oh, this is so cool. Like, oh, what's this thing called Zoom? And now Zoom is kind of a swear word because it's on my calendar <laughs> so much. And, <laughs> 40 uh, times a week. Yeah, so. And and so I'm 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 right there with people. I, I do wonder um if again the shift then, even if done really, really well. Uh, with Sunday services and stuff, uh, will be to systems and structures that do foster community and discipleship that happens midweek, which small groups may really return to small groups and really return to, man, these are these are people in 
in my neighborhood and in my part of the community or whatever that that I'm meeting with and we happen to get together and and we're discussing things and praying for one another and discipling one another uh and and so again I I I think it's a great opportunity for the church uh to just rethink a lot of uh things um I think it will be difficult for some of the churches that are based off of, you know, large gathering and large facility. Do I think they're going to go away? No, of course not. And I I wouldn't want that. I I mean, I love big church, love small church, but there's going to just have to be a lot of uh, flexibility and um, rethinking of things. Yeah, hundred percent agree with that. And I, I do think, you know, the benefit as I look at this is, is forcing Christians not to isolate themselves just among other Christians. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, this is forcing us. If we really look at it from the standpoint, we've we're we are limited to for a, a lot of the year to just being able to connect with our neighbors and uh, and or our coworkers. And so, use this as an opportunity to teach your people and your church members on what does it mean for us to just love people compassionately, to be kind and loving to our neighbors, with the idea um, and the hope and the prayer that maybe the Lord will open the door for me to actually lead them to Christ in that process as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, obviously so many question marks, uh, but again, I think there's, there's opportunity and um, you know, just, just keeping that, that flexibility will be important. What what do you think um, kind of the, the last question I have as we kind of think through post COVID church is what do you think is going to be required from um, the preacher? Uh, because so much of the last 50 years of preacher development has been how to speak to a live audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we have this whole new online audience and experience that's really just grown exponentially at warp speed. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see, Danny, a rise of, of new types of communicators, or is it going to require churches to have a couple different types of communicators on their team? Um, what, do, what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think that it's actually going to be multiple, uh, like you said, because there's going to be those people that they can be in their living room, you know, on their couch, uh, being able to deliver a message that is just awesome that they wouldn't be able to do in a in a large church or stadium. Um, but that there, I, I think there's still going to be that that place for the person that has been trained in classic communication or classic preaching, if you will. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's probably going to be both, but I do think it's going to, it's going to open up some opportunities and it's really because of how things have become culturally acceptable. Like it just, it wouldn't have seemed that culturally acceptable if the online church was the pastor in his living room having coffee, or it would have been seem like, well, that's, that's the weirdo. <laughs> and, uh, and now, <laughs> yeah. and now it's like, Oh, actually that really works. And it actually feels, um, it, it, it feels right. It feels authentic. And, um, just like we always say, it takes lots of different churches to reach lots of different people here, here we're going to see, I think there's going to be lots of different modes of even the future church that are now just going to be, um, become more acceptable, which so many of these things have been biblical. So like it's it's biblical if your worship service was Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. It just isn't culturally acceptable word now. It just feels like anything can go, you know, so let's try it. This is the time for the church to try things. Oh, 100 percent agree. And I I know even for us in the hiring where we're thinking about team members, like we thought "Ah, eventually when we get to this budget number and this amount of people, then we'll be able to hire social media and video editors and stuff like that. Now we're kind of going, I need them now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we uh, we're trying to figure out how do we raise the money and, and figure out unique ways to get those kind of people on our team to help us out. Because um, the reality is it's killing our current leadership team that does this, um, as a hobby versus being able to do this at a professional level. Exactly. So, well, it's been a fun conversation, kind of thinking through what uh, the church may look like on the in a post COVID world. Um, we trust the Lord, and that's the reality when it comes to uh, the new age of what the church and how we continue to move forward. The mission hasn't changed. Um, our methodology may change, and uh, that's okay. Um, God is still God, and He's still in control of everything. 
This has been the Unfiltered Podcast, and it's been a fun conversation. Until next time, everyone, keep it real.